Hello crafty people, I'm Jibid. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I have a bit of technical stuff to share with you. Um, just to make this video more boring. Um, first of all, if you follow regularly, um, you know I've been trying to improve the sound. And I think last time we made some progress. I think for the most part the sound was better for almost everyone. Um, so for now, um, I'm going to leave it as it is and in the back of my head um, I have decided to go ahead and try to uh, work out how to use um, this app that goes uh, with the microphone or something. Um, so at some point in the future, hopefully it will improve more. For those of you who still don't hear very well, um, uh, because the, the sound quality is quite soft um, if it's possible view on a PC um, with a speaker because that that does improve it I know a lot of us um, are used to using our phones these days um, and also PC not not possible for everyone I guess but um, if you can uh, you might find some improvement okay so that's that um, the next thing is um, that this book is for sale um, it's not a custom order and that brings me to um, a, a new avenue that I'm, I'm trying to explore. Um, I found out recently that Etsy um, charges quite a lot of money for um, European sellers um, which makes it kind of difficult. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mind paying commission because Etsy is really useful, but um, the the tax that they're adding on for European sellers is really hefty, so um, I'm going to have some difficulty there. I decided that what I would try to do with this book, oh, I'm sorry, please feel free to skip ahead if you're just here for eye candy um, to where you see the book open and then you can um, enjoy the video. Um, but for now, I just need to explain if anyone is interested in buying the book that I will have to do a direct PayPal transaction. And um, the difficulty here is that there's no selling platform for PayPal. So um, if three people are interested, say, um, I have to deal with them one at a time rather than somebody buying the book and then the people that come after that will realise that it's sold. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, so it has to be through direct messaging. Um, so if anyone is interested, you, you will have to message me um, through email or Instagram or any other platform that you're in contact with me with. And um, I'll have to set up a direct pay, PayPal payment. Of course, with PayPal, you have um, buyer protection. So um, there's no risk involved with you, um, you know, handing over money to a complete stranger. So that's that. And also there will be some um, terms and conditions that I will um, type below. So thank you for your patience. Um, thank you also everyone for your feedback on the sound issues last time. That was really helpful. And I'm going to get on and show you the book now. So it's called Gypsy Storyteller. And this was an, another personal project that I wanted to um, develop. Um, it's been in my head for a long time. And so this is another one um, that I wanted to explore and um, make a book out of this idea that I had. So it's mid 19th century and it's somewhere in Eastern Europe that our story begins. And it's the story of Madeline, who is a young woman and her brother, Eric, and how they have to run away from home. Um, and the book is their story from that point onwards. So, um, the cover I have made like so 
it's a lovely turquoise dyed cloth that I've dyed myself um, and I have my camera in a different place today I've moved the table for filming because I, I thought that the light might be better here so I will have to see on the finished video so I hope it's okay for you guys oh and also <laughs> I, because of the new setup um, I apologize in advance if I bash you in the head again because it's a little bit awkward um, how the camera is balanced but let's see okay so fabric cover co uh, like a heavy cotton and quite plain um, just uh, dyed and I've left these heavy crease marks and um, just try to have it a kind of little bit worn and battered I've done a little drawing here as you can see of the um, brother and the sister and they're on their travels um, I think I'll show you the charms now so on the side we have lovely beaded trims and ribbons you can see this very cool this just screams gypsy at me so I really have to use this this um, beaded trim and it has little rose beads on the on the ends and here we have this lovely glass lamp work bead with rosebuds here is a little it's like a little posy of flowers or herbs um, as they go along oh, excuse me a minute uh, as they go along trying to earn their living uh, Madeline collects wildflowers from the countryside and sells them in the towns and also she does some sewing and basically they labor and do whatever they can in order to survive on the road down here of course they're traveling with no home and so Madeline's wish at this time is to have a little cottage and settle down somewhere so I hope you can see um, there's a little cottage with a tree on this charm and then on this side hmm, okay this is awkward I have to get my arms around the lamp Okay, so um, and actually, I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to check which side the camera's on. I think it's here. Uh, hate technical stuff. Okay, so um, a little enamel bead here. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm actually pointing at the camera screen, which you won't be able to see, but I can see how stupid I'm being so um some bells okay and a little glass bead miller fury here and this is my favorite this adorable little let's see if we can get that in focus at least um it's a little gypsy caravan uh, let me see can you see that okay so I think for next time I'm going to have to change this setup again because that's not working for close-ups. Right, into the book. Oh, and um, yes, I forgot to mention. Um, if you would like more details of the story, um, there is a first chapter kind of thing down below which um, is typed out. So I thought it would be easier to read it that way than on the screen because there's quite a lot um, and so that explains why they left home and what they're doing and uh, you know a bit more um, story narrative and in this pocket so this is what you will read below so there is quite a lot and um, what I've done is included as we go a little bit of story narrative um, to kind of help the story along a little bit 
and where I've done that and I've used um, typed font like this and then um, also in the book you'll find some handwritten notes that Madeline has done herself so story narrative is typed and then other things are not so you'll see handwriting in there as well um, I've tried to limit as much as possible any um, typed text in the book pages and things that I've used just to give it a more um, uh, like an older kind of feel and then this is um, a note from the bookmaker which you've seen before um, if anyone wants this I'm happy to um, email it to you a few people have, um, have asked me again recently where it's from so just send me your email and that's there okay so Eric the brother um, is very quiet and shy and he loves um, animals and he draws nature and what he sees on their travels so the book will contain some of his sketches and drawings um, I've used this poem before Tewkesbury Road and what I've tried to do is use lots of poems and quotes that are all about traveling and dreams and hopes and wishes so it has a very whimsical kind of um, feel I think this book and another main feature is the plant prints and transfers that I've been using so you may have seen on my Instagram recently I've been experimenting again so we have some lovely um, not sure if that's going to be too faint to see um, some lovely um, plant shapes here um, I've made a nice big envelope with some uh, seam binding here and just cut a wavy edge and a magnet oh and that's a little uh, tag that comes out to write on so some more plant transfers here and some nice um, embroideries and fabric examples she does some as they travel she does patchworks and little sewing pieces to sell and earn a living I've added some tracing paper it is quite gloomy today the lights not very good even though I'm sat by the window so I hope you can see um, the nice transparency there so I've inked in the same colours as the papers and so these um, nature pieces are intended to be um, Eric's drawings and sketches that he uses the journal for um, I've added this little poem um, just slotted in because it, it's quite um, fitting it's called an old woman of the roads and it's about how she wants um, a house to settle down in um, just done some simple watercolors fields with flowers and inks and machine stitches here some decoupage more plant transfers um, I've used a couple of little scraps from the Edith Holden because I like the um, it's like a handwritten font so just some little poem scraps from there and some fabric collaging and I've used images from the graphics fairy and some that I've sourced myself various places on the internet and um, a few of the journaling cards are from Chikuna oh and I forgot about this one I think this one is um, Cameo Shop I think but I will um, definitely link that one as well below 
the library pocket here with a tab and lots and lots of stitching I forgot to show you you can see how many threads there are tons of stitching in this one and of course you can cut these off but um, they are quite pretty and I like that the gypsy theme is a bit more wild and free and I think it goes well with that Um, they're not strictly eco dyeing, but it was to start with. I had some eco dyed cloth, and I have um, dyed over it to give it some pinks, and uh, I think there's a blue one later, just so that it wasn't too um, brown for this book. I think that goes quite well. More transfers and stitching. More here. There's a little bit of narrative here, just a little note that's not below, so you may want to have a look. Um, so I think that's a good place to pause your camera if you wanted to. Okay. And that introduces the idea a little bit about gypsies, because um, of course they weren't born gypsies, the two. Also in this book, um, there are a few little uh, images that Madeline has added, um, some sketches that she's done herself, and also some story ideas. Because as they travel and earn a living, this is a plant print. Um, oh, sorry, and this is a original drawing. I've drawn that here, just a little um, cornflower. And some more eco dye, a little baby rose leaf. Um, so as they travel and they're earning a living, doing their sewing and labouring, where Madeline's heart really lies is in storytelling, hence the name of the book. And when she can, um, she has these little ideas, and this is um, intended to be one of them, little um, stories of mice. Yeah, this is from the wonderful uh, Jill Barclam books, Brambley Hedge. Um, so she jots down ideas and um, just little sketches and so forth. And they act out the stories for uh, the children in the towns and the villages. And that side of the story kind of develops. Um, into part two after of this book. Um, oh, this page came out pretty. I love the colours here. And I hope you can see the lovely delicate plant transfers. Let me just get my arm round here. So um, this story, as I said, was brewing in my head for a long time. Some more tracing paper here. And that's got stitches um, kind of done in a spiral all the way round and round and round and then just torn away from the outermost stitches um, and then same on this side so that's supposed to be another of Eric's little drawings oh and these are the Chikuna cards this is a really lovely set of um, journaling cards, nature cards that she does. So I've used a few of these and as always they're all backed on tea stain paper and have a little stamp. Uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Oh yes, part one and part two. Yes, so this story I've been thinking about for a long time and this is the result. It's another hand-drawn flower. Um, <clears throat> and as I was working on this book, that's a little tracing paper pocket here, and you can write, of course, over the top here, and some stamped lines. 
So as I was working on this book, the idea for a part two developed um, as to where the story goes later, because um, things don't turn out quite as expected for Madeline and Eric. And uh, as life does, things change. And um, I thought that the idea that I had for a part two for later on in their life was quite good. So I, I may, um, well, I do hope to do another book on that, which will be a different theme. Um, but um, uh, if you know me by now, um, <laughs> I am slow to implement these ideas. So um, I have quite a few other things that I, I need to um, work on before that. So it may be a while. So if you're interested in pausing again, there is a little bit that Madeline has done some journaling herself here. Um, I hope that's close enough. Uh, okay. And so this is tracing paper again. And there is a few of these storybook images that she has included. Um, before their mother died, um, she used to read to them from Hans Christian Andersen. So I've included this book cover here. And um, so this is where her love of storytelling has come from, as it's a memory of her mother as well. And so what they do is act out some of his stories and um, uh, as they develop, um, sh she develops story ideas of her own and adds those and they act them out. And Eric plays his little whistle for the children and that's more Chikuna cards. And they have a lovely old time doing that. So that's that. And here is a little quote from Hans Christian Andersen. Um, it says, where words fail, music speaks. Um, this was another little idea that I had, just a fabric pocket. And I've just sewed onto the back piece um, a piece of cardstock, just quite flexible and not too thick. Um, so it gives you space to write on the back. I've just done some red stitching around. And also, of course, it stops it flopping about. So it um, becomes a very easy pocket to slide in and out of. Another little gypsy image there with some lace. little um, collage of scraps and oh thank you to Jenny for the lovely laces that you've sent me um, uh, sorry <laughs> I'm hesitating again because I'm thinking now was it Jenny or was it Lydia thank you both ladies because I know you've both sent me lovely laces recently um, a little bronze horse because they travel with a horse too and some gypsy dancers another of Eric's little animal sketches and um, so this is a wildlife book and I thought this was nice because it has these little nature studies with the artist notes here and just folded it over um, covered the text of the book with some inked paper and some little journaling cards and for the library card um, I've chosen one of Hans Christian Andersen's stories and of course you can um, journal on the back there this 
This is a print done with um, Lino printing ink and it is a really good ink to print with. Um, you can see, I hope, how delicate some of those lines are. Really, really fine. So it gives a really good result there if you print with that. And such a pretty um, grass, that one. Some handmade flower paper. And here I've done a little um, collage with some of the patchworks that Madeline does. So I've sewed these four little pieces together of these cotton prints. And came out quite pretty. Here's that little cottage charm. Some more inked tracing paper. And a Midsummer Night's Dream quote. Hmm. I hope that's close enough to see it's um I really have got the camera set up in the wrong place this time, sorry. Um, stitching. And this is another of those, um, what's he called, Alfred Wainwright books, um, who, write, who writes and draws about walking in the Lake District. And I thought that was a lovely sketch that Eric may have done on their travels. And on the back, I've just left because it has this lovely area that you can use for journaling and he has the handwritten notes always in his books which is really cool and this one I like because it's a little boy and a little girl um, from Cicely Mary Barker again this is from one of her um, story books and I've just fussy cut around the top of the image to make her pocket And some of the little wildflowers that she gathers for selling in the towns. Nice big pocket there. And more poems from the Edith Holden. Fussy cutting. And that's the other side, so more sketching from Eric of the different places they visit. They try not to... Um, stop in one place for very long because of um, the reason they have to leave home so they, they think that there might be people after them. Um, also this is quite cool because it's Scarfell Pike which is um, famous around here. Um, it's, it's one of the highest, is it the highest peak? I don't know. In England perhaps one of the highest. But that's... that's um, more for serious walkers, but in a very British, English, modest way. <laughs> um, and that's nice because uh, we live very close to the Lake District, so that's where your book comes from. Machine stitching here. And might be easier on this side of the page to get a bit closer. Another Midsummer Night's Dream. And... What I think is really cool about Midsummer Night's Dream is that somehow it seems to fit into almost every book that I do, theme-wise. So there is something magical about it, I think, for sure. This is another um, Hans Christian Andersen quote. Uh, the whole world is a series of miracles, but we're so used to them we call them ordinary things, which I think was really lovely. I've done some little scraps here and there of um, machine lined paper and just torn around and added them here and there for uh, extra little journaling spots. And these little mice again from Jill, uh, Jill Barkham. Um, so these are Madeline's little story ideas that she uses. Um, I've made a pocket here with some more inked paper. And um, this is one of Eric's drawings from the towns they have visited. 
all the journaling cards are stitched. More decoupage and then this is a sketch that Madeline has done of um, costume ideas as her love of storytelling grows. Um, so does the or the, the uh, practical application of that. So that is also more to do with part two of this story and what happens to them later. So some really pretty transfers here. And I like this because of the little boy and girl here. Um, this is from a vintage Heidi book. More machine lines. Another storybook image. Some more beautiful leaves. Have some um, folk art style ribbon trim here and a little card. They travel sometimes by boat as well. Here is a teeny tiny embroidery. Um, let's see. Of a little field of flowers. I don't know if that's going to focus. No, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. There we are. And the poem He Wishes for the Cloths of Heaven. lace fussy cutting so here is a um, more eco dyed that's been over dyed with some blue dye um, nice big pocket again journaling spaces little story ideas and this was beautiful also from the same storybook um, Cecily Mary Barker, um, little boy, because Eric does love animals. He is one of these very quiet, gentle souls. Another little scrap of machine lines. Um, I'll hold this up again. So this is more of Madeline's writing. And I'll show you the top half and then the second half if you wanted to pause. A nice big envelope with a wool sewn around the edge here and more silk here. Little pockets and another storybook image. I really like how this blue goes with the ink goes perfectly and two little spaces for tags here and inside this one I've put some pages of tracing paper for journaling and then if you slot a little tag in here so that it can just stick up that will look quite cute Another piece of Edith Holden poem pages and some beautiful fabric textile here. That's um, Indian. Okay. 
another boat illustration that they've travelled on. Um, another pocket here. And a matching library with some lovely gypsy images. These were from the Graphics Fairy. And some more nature study pages with little notes of these hares in the field. And so this one I've just done as a fold out with some inked paper to cover the text. And then you have an extra little space here for writing. This one is another of my drawings. Um, and then as the story develops, they um, have some of the children also dressing up and taking part in the stories. So this is what I've used this for. This is from the children's Shakespeare. And I like this image of the man playing his flute with the animals there. I thought that could be Eric. Some old ledger paper, little fussy cut uh, chipmunk perhaps. Nice big pocket with stitching. Another little vintage image, two figures in a boat. Um, this one is a floating envelope. I love this quote. It says, to move, to breathe, to fly, to float, to gain all while you give, to roam the excuse me, to roam the roads of lands remote, to travel is to live. This is from um, Hans Christian Andersen's autobiography. Another um, plant print. And more um, wildlife book pages. So, whoops. Has the nice images on the side here and I've covered the text, well kind of covered it with some inked tracing paper. I saw this by accident afterwards, the wood was quiet as a church. <laughs> With a little mouse there, <laughs> sitting on a beam. Happy accidents are the best, aren't they? Small transfers here. Okay, so um, as I was saying about part two, what I've done is included these um, photographs just in the back cover because these are added later. And this is a little clue to how the story goes later on. So, um, Although the story is really complete here, um, of course they live on after this time. This is a really lovely drawing of, they look like Eastern European dancers maybe. I think this one is my favourite. I think that's a really sweet picture. So this is a little clue to where the story goes. And uh, just to finish off, this is a little bit more of the story narrative that you could pause to have a look at. And then this part. And I think that this finishes with my favourite quote, which is an old gypsy proverb. It says, we are all wanderers on this earth. Our hearts are full of wonder and our souls are deep with dreams. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time. Bye.